Hey guys, Nick here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at how to put text behind objects in your video footage inside of DaVinci Resolve like this. So I'm sure you've seen something kind of like this in videos online on YouTube, in movies, anything like that. And so we're gonna show you how to do it. It is pretty easy, but there are a few different ways to do it. So we're gonna show you that. So in DaVinci Resolve here, I have two clips. I have this cityscape clip, which kind of sort of, obviously a drone shot flying backwards. And then we've just got this shot here, a bit more of a complicated shape in terms of masking and whatnot, which is how we're going to get the effect. So the reason we're doing this is because both of them will require separate tracking methods. And so hopefully it'll help you with your own footage because obviously I don't know what you filmed. So first things first, obviously trim your clip to the smallest amount that you need. You don't wanna bring a massive video clip into Fusion, so cut it down to whatever you need to put the text in. With your playhead over the top, we're just gonna jump into Fusion. Straight away, we've got our clip, which is our media in, plugged into the media out node. Now, for this particular clip, we need to use a planar tracker because a planar tracker tracks patterns and it will be a lot better at getting a more reliable track with the fact that this drone is zooming out or flying backwards. And so that'll the planar track will give us just a better track rather than a point tracker because point trackers will track a position in this frame, but it will not help if that position gets smaller such as it is here, obviously, because we're flying away. So that's why we're gonna use planar tracker. So to add the planar tracker, we're gonna select the media one in node, shift space, type in planar or anything like that. And we're gonna planar tracker and we're going to add it. Now with the planar tracker, basically you need to create a reference frame to track the pattern. So basically we're gonna pick a frame where we can get the majority of what we wanna track. So I'm going to track this big building here Pretty simple. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is draw a shape around this building. So like so, this is the pattern we are tracking. Super simple. And motion type perspective, I'm actually going to do translation rotation scale because it's a pretty static shot and there's no real perspective shift. But if there was, that's when you'd go perspective. And with all that done, now we're going to quickly set our reference frame. You need to make sure you do this set, now it's using frame 118, this shape here to reference for the pattern. And we can track back, which is gonna be one frame, I guess. Yep, cool. And then go back to there and we're gonna track forward and just let it do its thing. It'll always do that weird jump at the end there that you might've noticed, oh, don't worry about it. Um, other than that, we got a pretty decent track. There's a little bit of a jump there. If you need to fix it, you need to fix it. The reason this is sort of jumping is just because of the reflections but it's not too bad. So the next thing we're going to do is with the planar tracker, go create planar transform. And now we have a little transform node. The planar tracker node itself is now pretty much useless to us, so we can just delete it. What we wanna do now is grab the output of the planar transform, connect it to the media in one node, merge it together, and nothing is there because nothing's plugged into the planar transform, so let's chuck our text in. I'm gonna chuck the text, connect it in, and we're just gonna type cityscape. And we can you can go through and adjust whatever you need to adjust with the text, make it extra bold, whatever you need to do. And you can position it any way you want in the frame. It will still use the planar transform to control its location. As you can see here, it is more or less sticking. We've got that little jump there as we showed you with that tracking. Um, so we would need to go back and retrack it, but for the sake of this tutorial, you can see it works pretty well. And so what we're gonna to wanna to do now is mask out the building because that's obviously, we don't need that. So it's pretty simple because the text is already connected to the planar transform node and is matching our movement perfectly. All we need to do for this one is draw a mask. So what we can do is grab a polygon or a rectangle, whatever you want, anything to create the mask, connect it into the text. And we're just going to create a little bit of a mask around the building. This you do want to be as specific and as precise as possible. Currently, obviously that doesn't look quite right, does it? Because we don't want to see the S, we want the text behind the building. It's simple, hit invert, done. And now you have your cityscape text behind the building like so. And then we're gonna get that little jump, three, there we go. Tiny little jump, but it's still sort of behind the building. 
And that is how you do it. It's really, really simple, especially with a not a super complicated shot like this and with a shape that isn't very complicated at all, like a building. So how do we take this idea, this really easy to achieve effect and put it into a more complicated shot? Well, let's have a look. So we're gonna go back into our edit viewer and here we can see the fruits of our labor. Looks pretty cool. We're going to use this shot now. So let's, with the playhead over the top, we're gonna to take it into fusion. All right, now this particular scene is a little bit different. There is, so the subject of the clip is just sitting in the frame, not moving. And then the camera is kind of panning, sort of rotating, I guess, around that subject. With this particular scene, because there is a slight perspective shift, we're gonna use a point tracker because it's gonna give us a better representation of this scene. And also you can see this nice dark object there and it doesn't really change in size. So it's gonna give us a really good track. So for this one, with the media in one node selected, we're gonna hit shift space add a normal tracker, hit enter. This create our normal tracking here and you'll see it visible in the viewer. And basically we wanna grab this little top left corner here, place it over that little object and this hard line box, this is what we are tracking. So we wanna make it encompass that little object there and you can see a good representation in the inspector. And then this dotted box is sort of like the search area. The larger it is, the harder it will be to track and probably the less accurate. So you wanna keep this relatively small because you don't wanna to search too much of an area. Now with the rest of this sort of done, make sure you're on frame. Well, it doesn't really matter what frame you are because you can always track back and forwards. But with this case, we're at the start. So we're just going to track forward. Let it do its thing, won't take too long. It's a really good tracking point. Okay, done. So now that we have our tracking information and it follows quite nicely, we now need to tell this tracker what to do with that information. So if we go to the inspector, to the second tab under operations, you'll notice that the operation of this tracker is nothing. It does nothing to the scene. So we need to select the down arrow and change it to match movement. What that will do is allow whatever we decide to plug into the foreground of the tracker node, which kind of now adds, acts like a merge node, I guess, will match the movement of the scene. So let's get our text node in plug her in to the foreground, so the green arrow, type whatever you want. And as usual, mess around with the text, do whatever you wanna do, let's increase the size. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna line the P up with that black dot, so you can kinda of see what's going on. So now if I move forward, hit play, you notice that that is matching the movement of this scene, that P is staying locked to that point. So now we come to need to do more or less the same thing we did with the building, except you'll notice that this particular shape here around the camera and the body is not quite a rectangle, obviously. So it's a little bit harder to work with. So what we're gonna do is, for the sake of this, we're gonna go to the very start. We're going to grab a polygon and connect it to the mask input of the text node. So the blue arrow, boop, done. Everything disappears. Don't worry about it for now. What we're going to do is we are going to select the polygon one and draw a shape pretty precisely around everything in this scene. Now a little bit you can get away with, but obviously the longer you spend on this particular task, the better it will look. And use as many points as you want to get the shape you need. Like so, and then this center section, we're just gonna keep a bigger gap just so that it's easier for the text to go through. And then we're gonna make sure we contour the shape on the other side as well. So you can see here that I'm messed up. So if you go back and hit that, when they're yellow, you can change the movement of them, the position rather. And then we're gonna go through, just do that. And more or less till we're at the same point. And then just a couple of points across. Grap, perfect. Just like with the other one, guys, we're gonna go to the inspector of this polygon mask and invert it. And there you go, you've got the photography thing. The thing is, if I scrub through here, well, that's not what we want. So let's go back to the start. And with the polygon node selected, we're going to go back to the inspector and set a keyframe on the center and size. That is going to allow us to move it, rescale it and everything like that in terms of the mask. And now we're going to do something called rotoscoping, which is frame by frame moving this mask and moving it into position. It is a tedious task. I'll show you the easiest way I've learned to do it, which is called the divide and conquer method. So basically you start at frame zero, then you move right to the end. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna move this mask more or less into position 
And now we are going to start to reposition the points. And it is pretty fiddly, so I'm just gonna speed through this little bit here. All right, so now that we've done that one, what we do is now we go to the center roughly. So we go to the center and it's pretty accurate. So we can just drag select a few and sort of move them into position. It's not too bad. You notice I'm not caring too much about the ones that don't obscure the text because it's not super important. We're focusing on the ones that are actually affecting sort of the positioning of the text there, right? So we're gonna move that one and that one and that one. And then you can select these ones here and we can like bring them in up quite a bit, sort of to go around the camera there. So now we've done that one in the middle, we're gonna go and we're gonna cut in half again. And you can notice now that things are starting to more or less stay in the right spot because we've started doing this. So we're gonna move this one. And then again on this side, divide and conquer, right? Kind of getting the um, idea of it now, guys. And then you'd go through and you'd keep doing that. So you'd halve it again and again and again, and eventually it will match the movement. You can notice we're already getting a pretty good result. So if we zoom out and select the media, just so you can sort of see what's going on. So we're already getting a pretty good result, even just by keyframing those few things there. And we have this text behind her in the frame and it looks pretty cool. And you can still go through and you can re, you know, rescale the text if you want. So I'm gonna move it over here. Still stays in there. We're gonna add a little bit of a drop shadow. So we're gonna to go to shade of three, I think is a shadow. Yep, ooh, doesn't look good there. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it a little bit see-through. We're going to rotate it down a little bit. So like that. And then we can shear it a little bit. And now we have this cool little effect where the photography text is behind her. We have a little bit of a drop shadow. Awesome. So there you go, guys. That is how you put text behind an object in the frame. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. It definitely helps the channel and subscribe for more tutorials in DaVinci Resolve just like this one. And yeah, until the next video, guys, I'll catch you later. See ya.